Okay, welcome to uh, Moore Park 2023. Uh, here I'm, I'm here with my colleague Deirdre Hennessy. My name is Lauren Chalou. In this board, we're going to talk about some of the sustainability challenges that are facing farmers. And essentially, everything you hear about today is going to be right across the open day will be around sustainability. So if we just think about sustainability, there's three pillars to sustainability, financial, uh, environmental, and social. And you know, in the past, we've probably very much focused on financial sustainability. Now we focus with financial, uh, environmental and social all together in, in, in it together. The next board is going to deal with financial stability so I'm not going to deal with it at all. What we're going to very much talk about on this board is talk about a little bit about the environmental sustainability. For example water quality, talk about gr greenhouse gases, biodiversity and we'll mention water use. Social sustainability is also extremely important and it's a very big feature of the Open Day in relation to people in relation to succession. Very important topic is in, in the area of animal welfare and ensuring that we're treat, treating animals well in terms of overall welfare. Uh, land use and dairy beef uh, overall into the uh, social aspect. So if we just look at our system, and this is something that we pres present quite a lot because it's a strong justification for our system. This is work that we've done and has been worked on by others where we compare the food security of our systems. So if we look at the amount of human edible protein that we produce relative to what goes into our systems, in a total mixed ration system where most of the milk in the world is produced, it's roughly one to one. So if we think of some of the negatives associated with animal agriculture uh, and, and we're only producing the same amount of human edible protein that we're, that's going into diet, that's not very positive. We look at a grass-based system and we have two grass-based systems here. The green one here is a French grass-based system which uh, was published in 2018 at about 2.6 to one. So basically for every kilo of human edible going into the diet, there's 2.6 kilos coming out. And the red or orange one here is about four and a half to one. So in an Irish typical dairy system, for every kilo of human edible going in, there's four and a half kilos of human edible uh, produced. That's the justification for our system. That's why our system is so important. When we look then at policy, and we all, you know, we're probably constantly getting hit with the policy changes that are happening. So based on the Climate Action Plan, we have a target to reduce emissions by 25% uh, relative to 2018 and to be climate neutral relative to, to 2050. So we'll talk about that as we go through our board. Uh, there's a target to reduce emissions by 5% to 116 uh, kilotons by 2030. We have the Nitrates Directive and the Nitrates Directive is very, very topical uh, at the moment. We had that EPA report uh, published last week that, you know, basically describe the parts of the country that uh, are meeting or not meeting the uh, requirements to go to 250 or go from 250 to 220. So that's something that we'll talk about as we go along. There's the biodiversity targets and then there's the restoration law. So finally just to see where we are, where we're starting from. If we look at our greenhouse gases currently and you'll see this as you go up and you go to the international village, uh, we have one of the lowest carbon footprints in the world. The figure we're quoting for Irish milk today is 0.88 kilos of CO2 equivalent. If we look at our other European partners, you'll see up at the top board, they're closer to one or over one. Our New Zealand uh, colleagues that are up there have a carbon footprint of 0.77. So this is a really low carbon footprint internationally, so that's really positive. Our total ag emissions, we expect reduced in 2022. Um, again, we're waiting for confirmation of that in the EPA report, so that's really positive. Our ammonia emissions increased slightly in 2022. But I suppose when we look at water quality and we try to get an understanding of what is happening at water quality, what we can see here is that when we look at the reports from the EPA, and this is EPA data, what we can see is that in the 2014 to 16 period, about 38% of Irish rivers were classified as unsatisfactory. If we look at what happened in 2018 to 2020 with a severe drought situation, uh, that increased to 47%. So it was a pretty dramatic reduction driven by what happened in 2018, which fed into 2019, a reduction in quality or an increase in nitrate. But happily, when we look at the data today and look at the latest report, which came out two weeks ago, the 2020-22 period, about 40%. So we're pretty much back to where we were in the 2014 to 16 period. Does that mean water quality is where we want it to be? Absolutely not. But it does mean that we have uh, recovered in terms of water quality over the last uh, number of years relative to 2018 to 20 period, which was uh, um, which showed a deterioration. So I'm going to hand over to my colleague Deirdre now for the next part of the board. 
So um, now we're going to talk a little bit about a lot of the practices that are already available and that you can take home and implement on your farm and, and the benefits these have in terms of the sustainability and the environmental sustainability of our systems. So the first is around reducing chemical nitrogen fertilizer and you're going to hear more of that throughout the open day as well. But I suppose some of the key things to, to focus on in terms of reducing chemical nitrogen fertilizer are around firstly increasing soil fertility. Currently only about 20% of our dairy farms are at optimum soil fertility so that's correct uh, soil pH P and K we need to get hundred percent of farms up to up to um, standard in terms of soil fertility then the next is strategic nitrogen fertilizer use so this is knowing what fertilizer we need to apply and when we should apply it in terms of weather conditions ground conditions grass growing conditions things like soil temperature and so on so using information that's available to make that strategic decision around nitrogen fertilizer manure management so that's in particular looking at managing slurry when has it been applied and how has it been applied so again focusing on low emission slurry spreading and applying as early as possible in the year to get the advantage of the of the nitrogen in that slurry and then finally white clover White clover is legume, fixes nitrogen through biological nitrogen fixation and it can replace chemical fertilizer nitrogen in our system. And it's going to be covered on the, on the last board here, the grassland board, but also in the demo and throughout the grassland village. Then moving on to look at protected urea, important for reducing um, uh, um, gaseous emissions. So currently only about 14% of our straight nitrogen that's been applied is in the form of protected urea. Again, we need to move to 100% of um, protected urea to replace a uh, can and urea. Moving on then to animal breeding. So the EBI um, has metrics now for improved efficiency of, of animal production, cow production, and using sex semen to breed our, um, our, our dairy replacements, um, but also allowing um, farmers to use uh, uh, beef genetics on the dairy herd um, and increase the age of slaughter linked down here of the beef herd. Um, reducing crude protein concentrates very important in terms of nitrogen losses from the system. So uh, particularly in the grazing, during the grazing season when there's plenty of um, protein available in the diet for the cows. Riparian margins and hedgerow management really important in helping address biodiversity so maintaining and enhancing what we have on the farms and then creating new um, habitats um, once, we've, once we've worked with what we have. Riparian margins also have an important role to play in reducing um, nitrogen loss to waterways. And then finally, uh, draining mineral, mineral soils so we get better grass growth and better nutrient use efficiency on those soils. So this really is a call to action for farmers. You know, we all have to take responsibility in terms of helping to achieve the climate targets and, uh, and other emission targets and loss targets. Um, and these are technologies that are readily available and can be implemented now to address those issues. And there's lots of help available as well if, if, you, if you need. There's ASAP, there's Chagas Advisors, we've AgNav which is, and Signpost Programme, which are both um, present advisors and people working in those areas in the signpost village which you'll come to as you go through the open day and then so that's where we are now but looking forward you know where where are we going so there's loads of research going on here and you'll see that as you go through the day and that's all focusing on the technologies for tomorrow so we've a lot of work going on looking at emissions factors for methane so we have a graph here some new work from Ben Lahart um, looking at methane emissions across the grazing season the red line, sorry, the blue line is calculated. So this is what's calculated using international standards, IPPC standards. And the red line is what we have actually measured from our cows grazing in our systems across the year. And you can see in the spring and the summer, the, the measured values are much lower than the, than, the, um, than the calculated methane. And in the autumn, they're similar. So this is really important um, data. The, the, um, publication is under review at the moment and that will feed into developing country specific emissions targets. We're also doing work with grass silage again looking at the emission factors there and based on the results to date they're likely lower than what, what's already what's published based on calculated figures. We're also looking at a lot of work going on on emission factors for soil carbon and fertilizer and again as you go through the open day you'll, you'll get some information um, on that. The soil carbon one is very important to have a measure specific to Ireland as opposed to the internationally calculated ones. 
Other work is we're looking at additives for methane emission reduction, also looking at manure management and maybe additives to reduce losses from manure, and then genetics and breeding. So continuing to look at uh, breeding um, really robust, efficient animals for our systems, both on the dairy side and feeding into the dairy beef side. And again, that will be dealt with on the third board as you go along here. There are other considerations, I suppose, in, in terms of the sustainability challenge that all our farmers are facing. And these, some of these are going to be driven by policy change. That's going to change. We just, Lawrence just mentioned the nitrate. So there's always going to be some policy change and we have to adapt to that. Metrics change, so things like introducing GWP star um, instead of the metrics that are there at the moment. Societal requirements constantly change and we have to be ready to adapt and respond to those requirements. And, and a big challenge I suppose for everybody is around people and the people in the industry and the availability of labour in, in the industry. So a few take home messages from, from this board. So, you know, it's really important that um, the policy that's implemented for agriculture is based on the science and you're going to see an awful lot of, of the science as you go through the open day here today. Our metrics are currently reasonably good so we're in a good place and we just need to keep working on that. So things like implementing the practices we already know are effective, that's the responsibility of all of us. And, and there are new technologies and new research coming down the road that's going to help to further address the challenges. But the, there's no point in waiting for these. We need to implement what we have now. These new technologies will be an add-on to, to all the good work that will be done between now and when they become available. So thank you.